Hello everybody. I am taking a walk, speaking with the Lord. Also, um, I am taking a break right now from a lot of counsel or even communing, fellowshipping in any way, shape, or form with people, humans. He's in a place where he's attempting to recover me. My soul has been vexed in very many different ways right now because of what's happening in the spirit realm <laughs> and with what he's sharing with me concerning all of that. And he said, I have need to recover you. And everybody's going to have to figure out how to do relationship with me individually, Janet. And they're going to have to rely on me. And really, I don't think people realize what they're doing. And normally, if we are working with the Lord and get re getting recovered spending that time alone outside of counseling a whole bunch of people and hearing all of their life issues. It's pretty easy to stay up there with God because you're just focusing on you and God and your relationship with God. But when he has you ministering to others and people are reaching out in a way that they should be reaching towards the Lord, but instead because their relationship is challenged with the Lord, they're reaching out to somebody that they, that this is, this is literally what he says, that they say, knows God and can reach him. You know how sad that is? And he said, that's not your jobs. Your jobs are not to reach God for other people. He said, that never saves a man. It's the relationship one-on-one. -on -one. And he said, until they get to the point where they understand that, they're going to wear one person out after another. He said, I literally am watching people that know you and you've told them you have to work this out with God. Turn around and go try to find somebody else who can do something for them. That's not going to work, folks. It's not going to work. You have to do the work with God yourself, which brings me to what I am seeing left, right, and center that's causing me to need to go and regroup with him. I walk in the spirit with him. I live in the spirit with him. And the reason that people are so scared, so desperate, is because they're not. And I can't do that for everyone. I can tell you that the, I shared a Neville Johnson video to my Facebook today, which was How God Opens the Heart. I believe that's the title of it. Everything he said in that video, for the most part, was what I said privately or in my latest videos before I ever heard that. Because the laws of the spirit realm are something that the body of Christ needs to understand, and yet they're terrified to walk in the spirit with God. <laughs> You pray, pray, just praying and praying from soulish prayers does not get you walking in the spirit at all. If you, he said, we have need to tell them that when they operate with funky spirits, they have become that. This is what he means. You'll never walk with the power of God if you're walking in the fear of the other enemy. You know, that's actual faith and reverence to the other kingdom. You'll never walk secure if you're, if you're not secure in the kingdom of God, in your intentions, in your heart, in your soul, in your inner man. If you're running to your flesh to appease it, the spirit of God will never be able to appease you. Never be able to rescue you. If you're going to run to your to, to, to your fleshly, soulish desires, he'll never be able to save you from yourself because you're feeding it. 
when he says things like, you, you, the children of God are those who not only know the will of God, but do it. That's what scripture says. When he says stuff like that, he said, I don't think they get it. My soul needs to be playing out in theirs. Now, now in their vessel, not, that, not, not their own. His soul. You want to know why? The will of God, the will comes from the soul. And he already told you to put the mind of Christ on. That's mind and will. The only other thing is emotions by the three basics of what is a soul. The mind, the will, and the emotions work from the spirit that you're attached to. The mind, the will, and the emotions is what gets cast into hell if it doesn't get regenerate. The only regenerate or, 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 or soul of vitality is his. There's no other life than life in God. God is life. So the only way you're going to have an alive soul that's not a dead soul on its way to hell or stuck in the trappings of hell is if his soul's playing out of you. Put this mind on you, which is in Christ Jesus. There's the mind. Walk out the will of the Father now, not your own. There's the laid down dead soul will of your own because now you're walking out the Father's. The only other thing is the emotions. And he says, your emotions... When you give me your mind and your minding, we have to mind him in obedience. When you give him your mind and you now have the mind of Christ, which is how Christ operates, you're going to operate. His thoughts higher, yours are now higher. And you give the will over to him. You don't have a will anymore. You only have the will of God and what he wants to accomplish in you and in the earth realm. Your emotional status will become stable. Because now if you have his mind and you have his agenda and you're working from his character and his discipline, your emotions will get disciplined too. And if they're not, then you need to say, I subject them to the, to the emotions of God. Because it's his will, his mind, and his emotions that will now play out of me. It is the soul of God. No one's talking about this, he said. So his point is, your soul, man, is puppeted by the spirits you listen to. If your soul man is given over to God, godliness and righteousness, and you're in obedience to it, you'll be set free. Free from what, Janet? Free from every other demonic fallen entity that's playing you like a puppet. He said you become, your soul man becomes who you play with in your mind and in what you're doing, your will. You have a strong will. Do your own thing. God tells you, don't do this. I don't walk in that. And yet you do. There's another spirit in operation behind you, leading you in that. You have become that spirit in your soul because your soul is unregenerate. And the only regenerate soul there is, is Christ. That's it. You have got to have the king himself living out of you and living your life with you as a co-mission in the earth. If we fundamentally will not have Christ's soul, him in leadership, leading us in all of our ways, when the, how in the world are you saved from the enemy that's then puppeting you? What, what, what do people think we needed to be saved from? Literally, think about this. If you're about to think hell and estrangement, you're only, you're only partially right if you think that's an eternal place that is some kind of literal place outside of God. You're only partially right in that. It's a state of being. It is estrangement from the spirit. You're not living in the spirit when you're living in hell. You're entrapped by what? By other entities who are puppeting your soul, man. They are controlling your mind with their thoughts and their ways and their behavior and their character and their ethics and their demeanor. And now you're entrapped by them. And now your will is non-existent because they're playing you. You've come into agreement with them. You're partnering with the covenant or the marriage partnership of sin and death and they're puppeting you and your emotions are out of control because that's them that's how they are you see christ is very disciplined he when you get to know christ and you're and you're sitting in the spirit realm with him he is very relaxed and very very resolute that guy does not get moved by anything in this realm except one thing he said one thing moves me and moves me to my core <laughs> when i have a real relationship with my child walking in the spirit 
folks. This realm is not the spirit realm. This realm is the earthly realm. It's the material realm. This realm is the realm where the sensual, devilish things reside. If you're not moved by the spirit realm in, an, in this foreign land, which means you'll be given to these things. This is real. I can feel it. I can sense it. That's because you can't feel and sense the spirit realm. That realm's way more real. That realm is way more real than this realm. The colors alone in that realm are way more beautiful than this realm. The experiences with God are found there in the invisible place. That overlaying the spirit realm over this realm and being able to see both at the same time will never happen if you can't even see the other realm invisibly first. Oh, I know. He says that sounds like a juxtaposition, doesn't it? You have to be able to see the invisible. No, you do. Because it's a whole different kingdom. It runs on different principles. It literally runs on principles. <laughs> it runs on what are your intentions because thought is spiritual movement. Thought. So when your thoughts are lower based and you're in fear and you're focusing on demons and you're focusing on woe and calamity in this earth, your light has gone dark. Please explain that to them, Janet. I had seen at one point, the Lord and I move in the spirit and I go check people out. Uh, according to when he says, go check them out. So I basically take his hand, spiritually speaking, and we go and we check people out. What that means is I go where you are. So if you're in your house, I go to your house. I can't see your whole house layout like I would see through these eyes. I see it sort of like a computer program that's been just sketched with lines. It's like a black and white kind of thing. But, but when I do that, I'm allowed to see in color. I'm allowed to feel. All my senses are working while I'm there. I can see if demonic entities are around. I can see the color of you. As in like your light, your brightness, your darkness. If you have any like colors uh, around you, like the seven spirits, I can see that stuff. I've seen pea soup around people. That's contention. Like thick cloud, gray cloud filling the house. When I saw this person, we were just speaking recently. When I saw this person, they were in gray scale. Not only were they in gray scale, meaning black and white sketch, but gray, you know, different shades of gray. They were flat. When you say flat, there's a difference when you use sh shiny finish satin paint and flat matte paint like that. They were matte, M-A-T-T-E. And that whole reason that that happens, he says, is strongholds. If your light has gone dark, how dark has it gone? That doesn't just mean someone's wicked and evil and mean and um, a murderer. It means that you have strongholds that are strapping you down and tying you to carnal ways. Carnal thinking, carnal ways, and carnal behaviors that are dark. Dark meaning God doesn't operate in that. It's lower, it's lesser, it is undesirable, and the other kingdom walks in that. So then, so then if you see that in the spirit realm, you have to say this person's oppressed of the devil. That's what I'm seeing. And it comes, he says, it all comes down to a root of belief system and honor. So number one, when you see somebody in a situation like that, you go, okay, they're oppressed of the devil. Why? He goes, belief systems. Because folks, what you believe is what you become. If you're going to sit around and be a fearful spirit, you are a fearful spirit. You're also a fearful soul because now it's leading your soul man. Because why? Because you have the choice. On the right is fearlessness from the Lord. On the left is to be scared and honor the other kingdom. So there, there it is where, you, where, where you're having an issue because you're honoring the other kingdom. Your faith, when you honor the other kingdom, your faith is misplaced. Your faith is in the other kingdom. You think they're powerful, they're scary, your focus is on them, and your whole emotional system and your mind and everything, your whole soul is keyed into them. You're attached. That's what a stronghold is. So where is the battle in the mind? Where is the battle? In the will. Your emotions will follow depending on which spirit you're listening to. So just because you've been given a Holy Spirit does not mean that you do not have the, the privilege to follow a funky spirit, a dark spirit. You do. 
It's what I see by far and large. The, the terrified people out there following a funky spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. He's standing there. He wants to help you fight, but your belief system is tied into and your honor is tied into the other realm and your obedience too. So you got a, you got a faith problem and you've got an honor problem and you've got a discipline problem. That's a stronghold, he said, if, in a nutshell. A faith problem, your faith is misplaced into the other realm. You're honoring it. That's why you think it's more powerful. You think it has some kind of say over your life, and I'm not fully sovereign. So you have an identity problem in that, my identity and yours, and you're obeying it. He said, what you follow, you become. So I literally have to, he said, from now on, you're going to tell them, you have become a spirit of fear. You have become a disobedient um, spirit. That's why the light is dark. That's why, because, because you're heeding and obeying these spirits. And I had to come through with a very stern message to someone. And I bawled my eyes out to the Lord. Because he said, I'm going to put a fire under their butts at this point. Because they're playing with fire. The wrong fire. The fires of hell. Not the holy, consuming, purity, holiness fire. Because they're, they're, they're disobedient. And they're disobedient, Janet, because their honor is to the other kingdom, not to me, and because their faith is misplaced. Okay, how, how, he says, how, explain how that plays out. If you have a stronghold, drugs, alcohol, lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, murder, slander against somebody's per persecuting other people. If you have these disobedience things, disobedience, why, Janet? Because God doesn't walk like that. He doesn't do that. If we're going to do that, we're fundamentally disobeying him. If he doesn't do it and you do it, then the soul of God, the mind, the will, and the emotions of God's not being played out in you. And he said, it's my kids who do my will and have the mind of Christ on. So your mind and your will has got to be his. His, not yours. And there's no regenerate. He's telling me this over. There is no regenerate mind. There's no regenerate will other than mine. So my soul. My good pleasure needs to be playing out of you by the wisdom and the counsels of God led of him. So if you're disobedient and you're doing things that he doesn't do, he said, this is not, he said, listen, this is not for the sake of, I want to control people. It's for the sake of you have not become regenerate. You have got to be the new man creation. If you don't step into the new man creation, you have fundamentally been handed salvation, never came into it. And this is what estrangement and hell is. It's now. Estrangement and hell is now inside your soul, man. If you won't couple with salvation, that's him and his kingdom of righteousness. He said that, seek ye first the kingdom, that's the king in his dominion, in you, and his righteousness. If you fundamentally have been handed it and you have an intellectual understanding of it, but you never get it into you, you never come into the truth. These are they who had the truth but never came into it. Pharisees, hypocritical, apostate, lukewarm people. Lukewarm get vomited out in the end, Janet, why? Because they never consummated the relationship. What's a consummation, Janet? It's when God's will gets played. It's when God's soul gets played out in you. His agenda, his will, he has the precision. You don't. He's regenerate. You're not. The only way you're ever going to be that is if he gets to play out of you. The Father's works get to be done in the Son. If you don't believe me for the work's sake, do you know what that means? It wasn't the miracles. It was look at what I walk in. He has to be in me. If you don't understand that, right? Because it's a father who does the work through me. If you can't believe the father's in me and I am in my father, at least believe the works. It's the same thing, folks. That's what it meant. Look deeply at what I'm doing because I'm the only one that sets people free from strongholds from the enemy. I am the only one that brings in light where darkness was. So if your light has gone dark, that's your soul. Based on what, Janet? Based on the fact it's unregenerate because your spirit, who's supposed to be attached to the Holy One, is cheating on him, adultering him, and hooking up with dark spirits. Now, why, Janet, why? Well, it always has been. That's why we need to be regenerate, God. And it's because the behaviors didn't change. What does that mean, Janet? It means that you have not been walking in the new man creation. It's been available to you, but you're not walking in it. You're walking in fear, doubt, unbelief, envy, jealousy, competition, and all the other stuff that God doesn't walk in. Slander, murder, um, d gossiping, disrespect, judgment against your man. 
I didn't come here to destroy man. I came here to reconcile man, to save man, right? So he's like, you got to look at what's operating out of you. Because if you're going to operate in behaviors that I don't operate in, you're going to have strongholds. If you have strongholds, your light has gone dark. You are being held down and strapped down by the enemy kingdom. I'm not here to talk about your salvation. He's been, he's, he said, I'm never going to take somebody's salvation away. They are going to relinquish it. Is that, that's how you end up in hell. I'll leave you with that. I think every one of us needs to think about that. Each man will, will reject it. What does that mean? If we reject salvation, God, what are you being saved from, children? You're being saved from darkness. If you're fundamentally wanting to still walk in those ways, you don't want to be saved from it. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have, we, we have, he said, you have to solidify this. First of all, do you want to be a spirit of light? Do you want your soul to be enlightened? Do you want your light to be light and bright and clean? Do you want your garments clean and wrinkle free? Do you? Because that's about your soul, man, and how it plays out in this realm. Every spirit comes back to me in the end. He literally is, tells me that like every spirit, every Holy Spirit that he ever gave to man will return to him because holiness returns to him in the end. He never talks about your spirit being cast into hell, right, for all eternity or the lake of fire. He talks about your soul. How important is it then that your soul man takes a look at your spirit man who's supposed to be looking at Christ and beholding Christ all day? If you're not beholding Christ and you're beholding the darkness, then you, 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 your light has gone dark. And then your soul man's playing off of what your spirit man's beholding all day long. Which behaviors are you playing with? Which spirits are you playing with? Because if your soul doesn't become regenerate as the new creation, if you're not allowing God to reform you inside, what have you been saved from? Salvation is not just a trip to a final destination. Salvation is that you step into eternal life now. What is eternal life, Janet? It's walking in the spirit with God and living with him now. Now. Being set free now in your soul. In your thinking. Get your think. Your think you want your thinking set free? Do you want your emotional status set free and stabilized in Christ? Then do his will. Get obedient. I can't make you be obedient, people. And it's vexing my soul because I'm sitting here listening to him and he's going, you can't do it. I can't even do it. Janet, I'm God. And all I can do is hope that they want to give themselves over to me. If they want to save their own lives and do their own thing and walk out their own will in this lifetime, they have the free will choice to do that. But only my children, only my children are obedient. Acts 5.32, I give the Holy Spirit to those who are going to obey. What are they going to obey, Janet? Your mind and your will. And then their emotional status will be regulated by you. Their moods, their conduct, their attitudes, their demeanor, all of that will be under submission to God. So when the soul man is not submitted to God's soul, he, he said, please explain spirit again. Spirit is the essence of your energy, of your ethics and morals that you run on. The power behind your, your, your soul is what he, he breathed spirit into a claymation body. When he breathed spirit into your claymation body, it made you alive. Then from that point on, you had the ability to think and emote and make decisions in this realm. That's a soul. The soul is the middle ground. It's the pliable. He says that um, science will call it uh, plasticity. That your brain and your whole entire system is placid, plastic, or plastic, walk, <laughs> walks in plasticity, not placid. But plasticity means it's flexible and it's reformable. If you actually knew the atomic law that put this place in this whole everything you see is created out of light and everything you see is actually vibrating and moving very very quickly like i can walk up to this tree and i can fundamentally touch the touch this tree and it feels solid like it's not moving it's just holding still it's not it's vibrating so quickly that it appears in this realm as if it's stable and still but it's moving everything's alive everything's alive here okay 
It's the same thing with your soul. Everything is moving and alive in your soul and it has the ability to, to go faster or slower or brighter or darker, good or evil. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's two options at all times, holiness or evil. That's it. And depending on what you're focusing on determines what your soul, which spirit your soul is heeding. If your soul is heeding darkness, calamity, woe, judgment of men and women, slander, gossip, rejection, betrayal, a fear, um, competition, envy, jealousy, rage, all that stuff, you'll become that. Your soul band will. Why? Because the spirit, source, ethics, and morals dark or light that you're following that energy in this realm everything is is energetic and light everywhere spirit realm too he said all the whole created realm so when you tap into that that's what you become so he says i need you to to tell them they have become darkness when they behold it they become light and holiness when they behold it and when you behold it means that you're exalting it inside it means that you're minded on Christ, you're minded on holiness, you're moving in that inside your mind. You're minding it. Do you understand mind? What are you minding? What are you creating? A mind is constantly creating your reality, your inner man reality. Your inner man reality, working in the spirit realm, constantly creating, will then manifest it into the physical realm. This physical realm is nothing more than a manifestation of what humans have done. He said, repeat that. This physical realm is nothing more than a manifestation of what humans have done. What do I mean? Look around. I, I mow this. So I, since I mow this, I make a path. And it carves it out. I trim the trees, which I'm going to have to do this spring again because they have fallen down in storms. I trim the trees. I keep it up. That is a manifestation in the physical of my intentions and my thoughts that originated in the spirit realm first. And then I follow through. So your intentions and your thoughts in the spirit realm will follow through in your behaviors. If you're focusing on what the enemy wants you to focus on, you'll do that. Hence, lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, murdering, disrespect, judgment, smoking, drugs, whatever it is. Sex, pornography, usury. Whatever you are allowing your thoughts to go to. Because let me tell you this. You never pick up a drink until you meditated on it first. You never pick up a cigarette until you meditated on it first. And there's a spirit behind that that is encouraging you to do it. And your soul man is weak in the spirit. And he says, that brings me to my other topic I wanted to bring up. How many of you are fasting the things of carnality? Food is a carnal endeavor. Food is one of the biggest things that people want to indulge on. It's why he'll ask us to go into fasting it's to throw down the power of the flesh. The flesh will tell you in this reality, we need to eat and we need to eat when we want to eat and you need to satisfy me in such ways. That is lust. That's not how we work. And he told you that you don't live by bread alone, but by every word out of God's mouth. So are you going to live in that spiritual concept? Or are you going to live feeding your flesh what it wants? So when you become a slave to the flesh, it's because you're not fasting it. You're not throwing it down. You're feeding it and indulging it, which would then be lying, cheating, stealing, compromise, betrayal, drugs, alcohol, bondage of any kind. It's because what? It never comes about in the physical until you have embraced it in the spirit. So who are you looking at? Your bondage is based on who you're looking at and who you're heeding. So it, again, is a faith problem. It's an honor problem and it's an obedience problem. I can't save you. Only you and God can save you. Meaning he's got all the power to save you in every way, shape, or form. But he said, now you're going to get to the point. It's based on repentance, folks. Without repentance, you're no, there's no salvation. If you're in bondage, where's the bondage, Janet? In a soul. A soul goes to one of two places, now entering into eternity with you, or it'll stay estranged from you because it's estranged now from you. In what way, Janet? Faith. We're saved by faith, guys. Grace through faith. 
his graciousness, but it's through faith. You got to have faith in him. So if you don't have faith in him, but you have faith in the other realm, and if you're not honoring him because your honor is to the other realm, you're scared. You believe they're powerful. You're focused on them all day long. You walk in their ways, not his. You're not exalting him. So you're faithless. You're honoring the other realm and you're obedient to it. How in the world do you get to God now inside your soul, let alone later, if you will not die? Those who seek to save their lives will lose their lives, but those who will lose their lives for my sake. Souls, you who will allow your soul to be on the back burner as the last thing that you want to uphold because you know you're wicked in all your ways, unregenerate, then you'll give over to him out of what, Janet? Faith that he's real, that he's sovereign, that he's the only one worthy to be worshipped. So then you give your honor to him in your worship, your time, all your strength to throw down every operation out of your soul so that he's the one you obey. We have an obedience problem, Janet, and it's based in honoring the other kingdom, and it's based in faithlessness. That's unbelief, guys. When you walk in unbelief toward God, you walk in belief towards the other kingdom. So what you behold, you'll become like, and what you tie yourself to, you go with now and then. Then meaning your eternal destination, like final destination, because your eternal destination is already begun now. But folks, you're an eternal being. You're either gonna you're either gonna exist forever here or there. That's it. And right now you're in the in-between state where you get to choose this day whom you're gonna serve. Serve. You serving yourself? And is your light dark? Because if it is, you're in bondage. And I see people chained to the ground. And he said the ground, quite literally, the ground, because they're grounded down here, allowing a soul to be carnal grounds you down here. You cannot soar in the spirit like eagles. You cannot be renewed on eagle's wings because you're not even on eagle's wings. You're grounded and you're tied down. He's like, what do you think I want to save you guys from? The enemy. Bondage, right? He wants to save us from bondage from the enemy, which means the enemy having control over our lives, being the father of us in our ways. So you have to look at your ways. What are your ways doing? Because once you start to look at your ways, you will determine who you're actually honoring and upholding. If it's you and your light has gone dark, you should be concerned about whether or not you've been given salvation but are not walking in him. Walking in the spirit is actually getting control of your person, throwing down the operations of the devil because he's there, God, and he is more than capable to do it. He's already done it. And he shows me like himself being this human, this giant, the size of the cosmos itself and Satan being like the size of an ant. And he's like, you guys have been allowing yourselves to be controlled by that guy. You know what that really means? You are that small when you're a little God unto yourself compared to him. Doing your own thing, walking in the ways of carnality down here, tied to the operations and the behaviors that walk out darkness. It doesn't matter what we profess, folks. It matters what we are. It, he said, repeat that. It does not matter what you profess. I profess Christ. I, 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 I know the scripture and, 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 and I believe on him. What does that mean, Janet? No, no, in practical terms. Well, it means that we uphold the kingdom. And the king, boom. That's an honor issue, isn't it, Janet? Okay. And that we love you and revere you. And he goes, what did I tell you you have to do if you actually love me? You'll obey me because if you don't obey me, you'll be obeying the other kingdom. And I can't save you because you have fundamentally yoked to it. What saves them, Janet? Faith. Faith in whom and what? Faith in you and your righteousness. You got to seek the kingdom, the king's dominion, and his righteousness. So, Janet, you have to be living in righteousness. I've given it to everybody to live in it. See, we make these excuses that say we can't do that. And he goes, what the, world call, what, what the, what the worldly church calls as hyper grace, he says, is that they actually say you can continue in iniquity and make it into, into heavenly places. Mm, we're not talking about the final destination because people are too wrapped up on that, Janet. He's talking about now, folks. 
think about that for a moment. You can either walk in heaven with him now and live in two different realms, which is what I do. I exercise my spirit, man, walking in heavenly places with God because I uphold him and his righteousness. So he said, he said, hyper grace, what we call hyper grace is actually a situation where people are saying you can continue in your sin and iniquity and still be with God in heaven. And he said, is fundamentally, am I in any way, shape or form tied to darkness? Do I in any way, shape or form uphold sin and will sin ever be found where I am? So folks, you're not walking with him if you're walking in continued sin, which is iniquity. Iniquity was cast far from him. When he cast Satan out, he casted iniquity out of his environment altogether, and it'll never be near him again in that way. The only time he ever comes near iniquity is when he's coming to be with you to clean you up. Literally, that is the only time he's ever near iniquity. And so can you imagine his jealousness? I am a jealous God over you because I watch you guys play with my enemy and transgress my way whilst you tell everybody you're loyal to me. Hmm. That is breaking my heart. He said, we're not mincing this anymore because they're perishing. And, and I have very few people who are going to talk about the fact that your behaviors are what you are. Your ethics and your morals are what you are. What you're behaving as is because someone's leading you in that. And if it's not me, it's the enemy. And you have coupled with the enemy. And I cannot save you if you choose to be estranged from me now. I do not have iniquity or sin upheld in my, in my person. And very much, if you're coming home to God, you will be coming home to his person now. We're not talking about later, Janet. Now. So those who want to join me now and join to my spirit and become one with me now will get rid of all the iniquitous ways. And I'm telling each and every one of them, Janet. He said, he said it's not like I'm not telling them. They're, it's not like they're not convicted. They're convicted on a daily basis. And they know that it makes sense. It's smoking and drinking and sex and, and pornography and all that stuff and jealousy and envy and gossip and competition and, and, and rage and all that. Is that stuff good for them? Is it holy? I'm convicting them on it every day. But if they're going to blow me off on it and say, well, he's loving and he's forgiving. Don't you mince my loving and forgiving with justice and equity. What a man sows, he'll reap. You want to play in all of that, you'll reap it because it's truth, truthfully what your soul has been given over to. You do not get to claim, he keeps saying it, you do not get to claim that you're walking in his righteousness. Think about that. You taint his righteousness and you taint the whole entire reputation of his righteousness when you say, I walk robed in his righteousness, but I participate in the ways of darkness. We cannot be compromised vessels anymore, held to these bondages, all because we won't actually turn over our souls to him. If you won't turn over your soul to him, then you're not repentant. Repentance is a complete change in your thinking. And that should begin with, Woe, Lord, for I am undone, a man of unclean lips, unclean thoughts, and unclean ways. If that's the truth, then repentance means you turn away from that. It means that not only do I see that this is taking place, I have got to be the other way around. It's a 180 degree about face turnaround. What you're thinking is what you're walking in. What you do is what you are down here. And this is the only in-between realm that you get to clean up your soul and hand it over to God. Because why, Janet? Tell them why. Because that's what you took back away from him in the garden when we fell. You took your own thinking upon you. You took your own will to make your own decisions. And you were going to feel what you were going to feel. And you were going to be moved by those emotions. So you're going to have to give back the emotions. Get them under control. You do that by giving back your will. You start now walking out the will of God in your life and he regenerates with you your mind. But you got to do something about it through obedience. If you're going to let your mind control you, you're under mind control and it is not God doing it. If you're not going to stand in the ways of righteousness and walk that way, you've got another entity or a many, many that are leading you in your ways. You're unregenerate. 
It's the problem with the people in the wilderness who wanted to continue thinking and emoting. I mean, how often were they upset going, what to God, we died in Egypt. At least Egypt gave us this, that, and the other. It was all fulfilling their carnal lusts and desires. Born out of what, Janet? Disrespect. Born out of disrespect and rebellion. They were not obedient to me because they had no reverence to me. And so there was absolutely no faith in me. Over and over you see them freaking out because they went three days without water. Instead of saying such as, Moses, our God is a generous and merciful God. Might you ask him to bring us some water and provisions? Instead of that, that which is respectful, which would have been meeting me in my domain. That's another thing. Listen, he comes, he came down from heaven, means he condescended down to this broken, dark reality for us. He is immense, beautiful light and love with no imperfection in him. And he condescended and brought himself down to this place, making himself small just to save us, to meet us where we were at. Once you meet him, once he meets you where you're at, you are now called to ascend and come up higher. You have now got to be reformed in all your ways. If that's not taking place, what in the world did he save you from? Where is your repentance then? What did you turn from? How are you in eternal life now if you're fundamentally still bucking him? Hey, if you're going to be the wilderness people and you're going to walk in disrespect, absolute fulfill your own will and desires with full-on disrespect dishonor towards him because you're you're faithless towards him you ain't been saved from anything those people never made it because what they were thinking and giving themselves over to is what they were in this realm and what you are in this realm you've been given this day to decide who you're going to serve now and forever if it's going to be you in dark ways then you will go where those who wanted to serve themselves in dark ways went that is the fall that's satan so your ways have got to become the ways of righteousness. If you think he can't do it, you'll, you'll never walk in it. If you never walk in his righteousness, being robed in it, and become the bride who made herself clean, spotless, and wrinkle-free, where do you think you're going to go? I mean, when your whole life here is over, right? The works of salvation. Do you know what that means? The ability to reconnect with God was a gift to you. That's what Yeshua fulfilled. He walked out. Adam and Eve became the ones who fell and broke in all their ways. Could not now walk out righteousness properly. So Christ came and walked out righteousness properly. That's the fulfillment of the law. The, the law is righteousness. And he was trying to point out how you guys can't do this. And I get that. You can't do it. You're broken. You don't even know how to operate like this anymore. You're grounded, you're carnal beings. I'm going to come. I'm going to make myself small. I'm going to condescend down, make myself in this state as the similitude of sinful flesh, but I'm not, which is why you get salvation, because I'm not that. But I came fighting against it, like all of you, except I did it flawlessly. And so I'm the perfect sacrifice. So now a new life has been laid down for you. Are we walking in the new life? See, Adam's ways led us into that and we walked that out. But now a new life has been laid down for you. A perfect life has been laid down to you. A justified life has been laid down to you. And the spirit of that has been given to you. But are, are you walking with him in spiritual places? Are you walking with him in heavenly places? Where are the heavenly places, Janet? Inside man. Where specifically? Mind, will, and emotions. Are you walking with the Holy Spirit? in your mind, will, and emotions, in the righteousness of God. Are you doing something about the wicked thoughts? Are you doing something about the wicked behaviors? Are you doing something about you getting your way when you want your way? Cigarette? Gossip? Competition? Persecution? Jealousy? Envy? Pride? Self-focus? Have you died? Because, you know, the seed of Christ, he, he's, he planted his seed in us. His seed doesn't even take to grow and to sprout out to become that living branch that doesn't get cast off because it withered and died. The only way that seed takes place is if you die. Die to what, Janet? Die to an unregenerate will. Die to the disposition, the demeanor, the ethics, and the morals of the dark realm. 
How do you do that, Janet? You put on this mind that was also in Christ Jesus. So now you're going to mind holiness and righteousness because that's who he minded. Now holiness and righteousness is going to play out of your vessel. You're, now you're going to do the will of God. The soul of God will be manifesting in you. Your soul will be in agreement with your spirit who is beholding the beloved all day. And so his spirit's going to lead your spirit and your spirit is going to reform with God your entire soul system. Oh, yeah. He goes, didn't that sound like solar system? Solar is light. I never even thought about that, God. Wow. Are we dark beings? You don't, you don't, you don't become a light being just by claiming you are. These are they who purport themselves to be angels or messengers of light, but they are really darkness and whitewashed sepulchers at their core. What are you at your core? He said, I can't mince this anymore. Time is running short. Go big or go home. That's this life with God. Go big or go home to your final destination led of your own ways. We're going to have to largely support God and exalt God within. When he says, I'm the most high, is he in you? Because if, if you're going to pick up those behaviors that, he's, that he doesn't walk in, he's not most high. He's gotten me off of almost 20 different meds, 14 plus meds, 17, I think, is somewhere around there. He's gotten me off of that through the years. The only thing that I use at all anymore is ibuprofen for inflammation. And even that vexes me that I have to use that or do and ask him and I'm under him on it. I don't drink. I don't smoke anymore. I used to smoke for the majority of my entire life. I looked at him and I said, you don't do this and it is disrespectful to you. And I have a serious problem because my, because my flesh will look at you and go, I don't want to give it up. Except here's the deal, God, is I know that the flesh is your enemy. So I know it's going to battle you on this. But see, I don't want to serve the flesh. I want to serve you and I need help. At that moment, he broke the stronghold in me. And for three days, I had no cravings and I haven't smoked since. Because he said, that's when you reached repentance. Because you literally said, by an act of my will, I lay my will down. My will, my soul will not follow these fleshly ways. It is not my desire. And I'm going to do everything with you. And do you know that I, it wasn't easy. He took the, he took the flesh, um, addictive, you know, um, sensations away. I had no desire for three days physically. But that does not mean the mental wasn't there or that the enemy wasn't there to uh, have you think about it, right? Because patterns, certain time of day you go out on your breaks at work, do you go, okay, so I cried. I cried saying, it's really difficult to die. And he's like, yes. I said, but every minute that I don't do this with you, every minute that I don't pick up a cigarette, every time that the temptation comes around and we cast it down and you get victory, even if I'm bawling my eyes out, hyperventilating, crying, we, we got a victory and the flesh isn't ruling us. And he's like, yes. And if you just continue that, you'll be set free. But see, I was never set free from the physical manifestation of what was taking place until he healed my soul. My soul was, I'm in bondage and I don't want to be and I don't like it and I don't like disrespecting you. Um, I know that's coming from my spirit man who's beholding you, but my soul man is tightly woven into this carnal nature and the flesh wants to do what it wants to do. And he's like, well, I can do something. I can help you. So he did. And I believed him that he was going to fight for me and he did. But I was required to uphold it and that's the key. You will be required to uphold it. Do you know that you won't die if you quit smoking? Do you know you won't die if you quit drinking or get off the drugs? Or you quit gossiping? Or you quit slandering and judging people? Can you look at a sinner and love them? Can you look at a sinner and accept them in your heart with love? I'm not talking about hang around them all the time, but I'm saying can you look at them and can you pity them for the strongholds that they're under? 
You won't die if you give up fleshly, fleshly dark ways. You'll be set free. See, the devil wants to convince you that if you give this up, you'll be miserable in all your ways. And God goes, do you believe that? Because I have freedom and there's a lightness that'll come over your soul when these beings are released and your behaviors are now in alignment with mine. There's freedom. And I'll tell you this. There are times that the enemy will come around and want to fling back. You should want to do. Remember how this felt? Remember how? That's not God. You should know right now that if you're having a thought that was like, remember how this felt when you would inhale a cigarette or whatever. You think that's not the devil tempting you? Mm -hmm. They're going to come around with that. But then you got to remember, man, but look how tight I am with God. <laughs> I'm free and my lungs are not compromised anymore. And uh, I'm not sowing death onto myself because if I'm going to play with death, I'm sowing death, right? You play with sin, the wages are death. Remind them of that. If you play with sin, the wages are death because that's the laws, the spiritual laws in play. So you sit and you think about where you're at with God now and how you're in alignment with him in this way. Now we don't smoke. God doesn't smoke. I don't smoke. We're in alignment in this way. I'm in obedience in this way and I'm upholding the kingdom in this way. I'm upholding the king and his righteousness. And we scrubbed a dirty spot off of our garment and we ironed out our conduct. He's like, yes. So then you tell those spirits when they come around that they, their temptations are going to fall flat. Why, Janet? Because you have something better now. And he said, the whole reason we're running to all that stuff is because you're not coming to me and staying with me and crying it out and dealing with all this stuff because emotions are tied to why you do these behaviors in your lives. And underneath all those emotions are belief systems that you have where you're not trusting me, you're not coming to me, you're afraid to feel. Do you know that many of us are afraid to feel the depth of emotions? And yet, our emotions are given to us to show us what's really going on inside. Now, I can be broken up in a depth of a contrite spirit and heart based on the fact that I'm looking at all of you guys and I'm like, they're bound down with chains and darkness has consumed them that's been all around them enveloping them. That breaks my, my, my soul wide open. And I feel the depths of that. And you know what that does? When you're clued in and your emotions are being used properly, that causes you to enter into the spirit realm, into a massive intercession with God, where you're going to sit with him in heavenly places and discuss what you can do for these people. And he said what she's doing right now. That's what she can do for you. That's when your emotions are being played properly because you're not afraid to feel. There are times when I say, I don't know how to express what's going on in me. And he goes, that's my love. How powerful is that? I go, I don't know what to do with it. It, it feels like I kind of want to run out of my skin right now because you're loving on me so hardcore in this realm that I don't have an expression of what to do when that comes over me. And he goes, relax. <laughs> no, it's me. I, I, I once was somebody who was afraid to feel because I had been enveloped by a whole bunch of darkness, dark people with dark agendas, dark thoughts, dark opinions, cruelty, abuse, neglect, etc. and so on, right? Throughout life. So then you want to numb out. <laughs> Why do you think drugs are used, he just said. He said anybody using drugs, prescription or otherwise, is because there's pain. You have to face the pain with God. You have to face it straight on without the drugs. You have to go to him and then he can heal you. If you won't do that, then you'll continue running to the external drugs and things that you can do. Pornography, sex addictions, it's all drugs. It's, it's, it's fixes, fixes to your flesh. If you're going to continue to feed that, you'll never go to him and you'll never get freedom. And it's all because you don't want to go through the feelings we have to be able to face all that with God to be healed. Once you get healed from it, they can no longer play you. Your emotions don't play you. You control them with God. You become disciplined. You're like, oh, I've been there. It's not fun. I mean, going through heartbreak is not fun, even when it's over you guys, when, 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 my, when my heart is contrite. That's why he says I'm close to somebody like that. He's not going to turn you away because of your heartbreak and your fear of feeling the depths 
He's going to take you through these, these periods where you're going to have to release this stuff from your soul to be healed from it. So you're going to have cry sessions. I mean, there's probably months that people can go through a phase of just release, release, release. And then you get healed when you'll release in his presence and know that you're safe. Once you know you're safe with him and that you can feel these things and they're not going to kill you and that he's there, you get stronger with him every time because you're like, man, it's now been two months of dumping all these emotions that I was afraid of and was masking and pushing down and becoming repressed in me through body aches and pains. And where do we think fibromyalgia and stuff comes from? He just said, ask me how I know. I was diagnosed with that because he said, this, they'll tell you, they don't know what it's from. I do. He said, it's from going through abuse and neglect and betrayal and all that stuff. And then shutting down, numbing out, going to drugs and trying to escape pressing it down inside of you instead of dealing with it and releasing it so come and release it to me release it to me because if you'll release it to me the strongholds have to go because the only reason they're holding on is because you're holding on to all that pain you don't want to feel it so you want to numb it down and stuff it down folks what you behold all the time you'll become so if you're keeping it in you you're beholding on to it do you see what I'm saying let it go Take all those abuse situations and neglect and betrayals and all that. Take that to him and release it. Cry. Be angry if you have to be angry for a little bit until you get through that. And cry and release it because your whole body will retain that. Your nervous system, your thoughts, your soul will all retain. Let it go. Forgive. Let it go. Because when you actually forgive, you're releasing them from it. You're like, it's over. So I'd like to release them from it so it'll release me. Do you see, folks? We have got to get regenerated in our souls. That's healed. He's the only one. He's the healer. He's the only one that can help you with this. All the drugs will do is help you numb out and push it down deeper. And then that's where you get people. Eventually, you'll see even in the secular suicide and stuff. They, they Famous people. They have all the money in the world. They could do anything. They've got friends whether they're true or not, right? They got friends um, everywhere around them. They could be, they could have fans cheering and everything. And then you hear they killed themselves. It was never dealt with. Whatever they went through was never dealt with. They never met the light. The light never was able to cleanse them, the Lord. The truth was never able to penetrate that soul and heal them. For I am anointed for the Lord God is upon me, for he hath anointed me to, what? Bring good tidings to the meek. That's the depressed too. It literally says that in Strong's. Those who are pressed down. Let me bring you good news. Christ is here. <laughs> I'm an ambassador of his spirit. And we work in love, light, and power. And he has the ability to set you free. So I'm going to bring that to you first. And then heal the broken hearted is the number two. Heal the broken souls. This is what he is attempting to do through me right now. Is to help you to come to him and release. Release all of that stuff to him. Forgive so that you can be released. Once you forgive, you release. If you won't forgive, you hold. You be holding on to that. And there's a strong hold on you of darkness and woe and calamity and pain and suffering. Let it go. Give it back to him. He knows what to do with it. Because if you let that go, you make room inside your soul for the light and the love to come in and to heal you. So if you want to hold on to all that stuff and be in this space, then don't forgive. But if you if you actually want to be set free, then extend love to the unlovable, the ones that did whatever. Extend love in just saying, I release you from all of this. The moment you do that, then God can come in and fill you with the opposite. Until then, you're too full of that other stuff for him to come in and give you light, love, and acceptance and healing. What you be holding on to, what you behold... I'm holding on to Christ all day long. I'm focusing on Christ all day long. I'm focusing on righteousness and love so that I can become the righteousness of Christ fulfilled. That's a full stature mature one. So that I can become love to love you. So that, so that I can operate as he does because he's going to do his works through me. And he's like, I have need to bring these things about for them to understand the depths of the depravity of the human soul that is in darkness held down by chains because you have to decide to do something about it with him. Exercise your salvation means I've given you the ability to walk in freedom, are you? Because who are you actually upholding? 
If you're upholding me and holiness and righteousness, you'll be set free because I walk in love and light. I'll never not want to love you or set you free or help you. But if you will continue to hold tightly to the other realm, honoring it and obeying it, then you are faithless towards me and your full faith has been misplaced in the other realm and you will remain dark and bound. And I have been unable to set you free, even though I gave you the salvation and the ability to yoke with me. I love you guys too much to not tell you that. You know, for a long time, he said, what you're going to do is you're going to show them how you walk out what you walk out with me and return them to, 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 to first love. And I said to him, oh, well, you know, no pressure. I don't really know what that, he goes, you're just going to think about what we do. And it tried to explain it to them to the best of your ability in an ABC one, two, three, easy kind of format. So that is what, what are you thinking and what are you doing? Because if you haven't died, then you will be thinking and doing your own thing. And we're unregenerate when we do that. The only regeneration there is, is Christ himself functioning out of us. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. Is it truly happening in you? What are you watching? Are you watching videos and posts all day long and and movies and television and music, listening to other created beings? Or are you sitting with the Lord, focusing on his righteousness and facing him with all this? Don't go just, he said, please don't just come to me to talk about everybody else. And I pray this over someone else and you're disobedient to me. Deal with your issues. Because he said, what I'm seeing is people that will come to me and their heads are down and they won't look me in the eye. And I told you if my people will humble themselves and face me. Second Chronicles 7.14. Folks, you have to be able to look them in the eye. If you can't look them in the eye, then you're operating in shame and guilt. And you got to look at why. I don't operate in shame and guilt. I did one day. It's because he corrected me. You blocked that person, Janet, and they are in error. But how am I ever going to be able to get the truth from you to them if now they can't see our posts at all? So then I felt shameful because I did my own thing. And he said, now let it go. And I spent the rest of the day letting it go, but also focusing on it, which means focusing on the lesson. I said, I don't ever want to lose this lesson. That if I do my own thing, it could, it could actually affect other people's lives negatively. It's the same thing you're doing. Didn't he say, if you're going to in any wise do something that's going to make your brother weak, you better not do it. Are we walking around? Showing other people behaviors that the Christ himself does not walk in. Gossiping, slandering, pornography, drugs, smoking, drinking, lying, cheating, stealing, uncontrolled, um, undisciplined souls that are not obedient to the Lord nor reverencing the kingdom or his righteousness. Because you're actually influencing other individuals. Well, I went before this person all the time. I mean, I visited their work all the time. And this is what they showed me was okay in the kingdom of God. Ooh, he said, that should make an impact on people's souls right now. Folks, you're either witnessing the kingdom of hell to the people around you in this realm. Or God and godliness. Who are you, who are you ushering in? Who are you ushering before them every time you open your mouth or present yourself? If you think that that's heavy, it should be, he said, it should be. You should understand the weight of what you're representing in this world because what you are is what is being displayed to everybody else. And a state of regeneration is to continue to be being. You know what makes me unhappy? When I find myself operating opposite of Christ, quite literally makes me unhappy. It makes me feel dark. I literally, my mood drops. Uh, I start to not feel well in my inner man and all that. And then I have to backtrack and go, hmm, what did I just allow in to influence me in some way, shape, or form? It's a constant effort put in with all your, you want to love me? Then love me with your whole soul, all your mind. So all your minding. All your thoughts, all your imaginations have to be lined up with Christ and all your strength. 
all your strength, folks, means you're going to put everything into that because this, this, the spirit of this world has an agenda to take you down and take you out, to take you to hell now inside your soul so that you never leave. If you're going to operate with them inside your soul and be unregenerate with, without Christ, without minding him, without obedience to him, then you're going to go where that soul, that spirit goes that's leading you in your soul ways because that spirit has already been decreed by God that he ends up in the lake of fire and everyone with him it was never meant for humans. We were meant to recouple with God and godliness. Let's be real. There's no such thing as iniquity in God. There's no such thing as sin in God. And you realize when you return to him, you're returning to him, not just some destination where he's like, oh, well, in here, we don't have that. It's true, but you're returning to him. Folks, we're in a containment area right now that's, that has darkness in it and light. Eventually, you're going to either go into the place that is only for darkness when there's no light, or you're going to go into the place that's only light and no darkness after this. This is the only realm that has both. So if you're going to go back into him where there's no darkness, don't you think you need to uphold that now? Any way that you're aware of that you have darkness in you should be being dealt with. Because in him was found no place of Satan was found no place in him. No darkness nor shadow of turning. And if you're about to say, we can't do that. Oh, you just said that not all things are possible with Christ Jesus. And it's probably based on why you're still in bondage. I'm not in bondage, folks. I, I'm bound, like Paul said, I'm now a bond servant to Christ. I am in chains to Christ and righteousness. And I walk therein because I enjoy it. It's beautiful. It's light. He fills my vessel. He communes with me. We quite literally walk in the spirit. I see in the spirit. I, 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 I partake with him. I watch him. Why? Because I focused everything about my person to only want to look at his fruits, his attributes, his ways, the ways of righteousness. And I dove into the scripture and I never came out. I see people on social media talking about frivolous, vain things. And I think to myself, is that a sin? No, it's a choice. I don't do that. I feel it's a waste of my time. It's a waste of my time to talk about um, things of this earth. It just is a waste of my time and focus. Because if he said, "If you, those who seek me with a whole heart will find me, that means oh, my whole soul. That means what I'm thinking on, what I'm giving myself over to, how I'm spending my time will either determine whether I'll find God or not. I have no time for vanity. You want to know why? Because it's not that I don't have the time for it. It's that ah, oh, once you have been in the presence of God, there's no other place you want to be and you never want to leave the presence of God. And vanity will take you, your, your eyes and your focus away from God. I don't ever want my eyes and my focus to be anywhere other than God. Because when my eyes and my focus are on God, <laughs> I'm beholding my beloved and the two of us are embracing. There's nothing better than that. There's no drug you could take that's better than that. So when I see people who come into his presence but are wearing shame and they're wearing these other garments, take them off. Obey him. Walk as he walks. Clean yourself up. Look him in the eye. There's freedom there. Look him in the eye now in your filthy ways, but repent. Stop them. Turn around. Do the opposite. Repent. Face him again. You have all the ability to face him in the middle of your filthiness. That's when he, he slayed himself while you were your dirtiest, before you ever met him. Before you ever accepted him, he slayed himself for you already. Which means that he's not desiring to turn you away. Not even in your filthiest state. But can you see that he's beckoning you to come out of your filthiest state? Come into the estate of God. Come into the kingdom. Come into the place where righteousness is upheld. Come into the place where freedom exists because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. If you're going to walk in darkness, you're not walking in the spirit of the Lord. So there's no freedom. He 
said it's pretty simple. I never said it was easy. You'll have to die. Many people don't want to die, Janet. But see, if they don't die in their soul and become regenerate, the new man creation in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus in them, quite literally, if they don't, then they die forever. And it's all because that they stayed estranged in this lifetime. He said, I don't care what people want to tell you the definition of salvation is. I'm telling you that I came to save man and I came to save man from darkness. So you can't play with darkness and have the kingdom of God being upheld. Folks, I don't want to know who makes it into heaven by the skin of their teeth. I don't want to know. But he tells me a great majority. You know how sad that is to me? It's extremely sad. Because what it means is they had the opportunity to achieve more with me and to come in deeper and to actually learn of who I am and unite to me in that realm. And they never did. They were so bonded to what they saw and felt down there of that carnal realm that it was more of a reality than me. And so they never met me in the heavenly places in the way that they could have or should have or that I desired. You know what? I want to be in the holiest of places with him. You know why? Because if you can get gain entrance to the holiest place with him, you have access to every other area of heaven. I can go visit the people who are in the outskirts who barely made it by the skin of their teeth and everybody in between. But if you are in the outskirts and you barely made it by the skin of your teeth, you do not have access into all places of God. You will be taught and reformed on the other side and it is very slow. It's like molasses. Because this whole realm was to show God in yourself how serious you are about him and righteousness. How close do you want to be with me? Because I'm going to put you in a realm where it's going to test everything about you because you're going to have the opportunity to do your own thing and partner with darkness. But you're also going to have the opportunity to lay down your own will, your own soul and heart to me and to follow me. But it's going to test everything in you to see if you're able to do that. But to those who can overcome in that realm, I will, I will grant to sit with me in heavenly places. Folks, I never wanted that to not be me. I hope that you want that to be you. And you want to take him seriously. Do you know you can have, he just said, do you know you can have fun and, and you can joke around um, in jovial ways and still walk in righteousness? You can actually enjoy life and walk in righteousness, clean and wrinkle free. He laughs so much and he has so much fun, folks. We don't have to walk in dark ways down here to think that we have to have fun. He wants to show us a better way. That's part of salvation and working it out. We have a part to do in this. this he wouldn't say, listen, because he said salvation is just you shaking my hand. Here's your salvation. It's a free gift, which is me. And you have the ability to now walk out life with me. But he said most people just leave it at that. And they never take him up on the next step, which is actually living with him. So it's been offered, but they don't live with him. What does it mean to live with Christ? He's going as your husband, as your partner with you through the Holy Spirit. He's going to show you what's acceptable and unacceptable in your marriage. In this world, are you allowed to do whatever you want? Or is your partner going to have a problem with that if you're going to go cheat on him? Your husband in, in the spirit realm is going to do the same thing with you. And he's going to tell you in this way and in that way, you're cheating on me. And um, it's really devastating to our relationship. And these others have influence in your life. You're, you're, you're in oppression of the devil. So, folks, obedience isn't just because he wants to stand over you as a tyrant. If you think that about him and he just wants to control you, you have no idea what love is. You don't know him. Love is the, is the power and the passion to come and set you free from darkness and the devil who is trying to drag you to hell with him. That's his goal. God's goal is to set you free from all of that through love and light. But you have to embrace love and light. Quite literally. And you have to become that in your soul, man. That is what this time period is for. And Father, I pray that you'll help each and every one of us to understand that what we be holding on to and what we be allowing is what we be. And what we are, sir, will determine whether we're upholding your kingdom and you as high one. Because you are the highest in dominion in the end.
You're the highest in dominion now. But in the end, you'll stand in judgment over all things, judging all things. And right now, if we won't make you high one that judges all matters inside of us and leads us in all our ways, then we'll continue to be on the throne. And if we'll continue to be on the throne, then we are the little ones in the garden that wanted to have our own souls. I want to think for myself. I want to focus on what I want to focus on. I want to become what I want to become. And I'm going to do that by the actions that I'm going to do. And none of that is going to be led by God. I will be led by my, by my lusts of my emotions. If it makes me feel this way and it's good, I'm, then I'm going, to, it's, I'm going to determine it's good. And I'm going to walk in this. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. In order to kill all that and overcome, you have to overcome that. He just said that's what you're overcoming. In order to overcome that, you have to die. Die to all of your own leading. You have to now have the soul of God being walked out in you. The mind that was on Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus put this on you. So now you have to mind God in the same way that Jesus did and exalt God in the same way that Jesus did. And it's the Father's will that gets played out just like Jesus did. And he was a very disciplined one in his emotions. His emotions did not control him just like Jesus. That is what he is reshaping each and every one of us into. And Father, we have to understand that this is exactly what the salvation is being worked through that man. And in that is freedom. And in that is the union with the Holy Spirit. And where the Spirit is, we now have freedom. Where we don't have the Spirit, we don't have freedom. So go with him. People, I pray you will go with him sit with him and find out where you don't have freedom and then you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come into that area and then you need to repent saying that I have been doing my own thing I repent of this I've been walking in darkness and evil ways I want to turn from this and I need your help and I need the power of God and I need the dominion of God to deal with this issue inside of me and resurrect me This is the first resurrection. When your soul is able to be saved by the Lord, this is the first resurrection. And these are they who have overcome by the blood of the Lamb, which is the gift of Him uniting with you now through mercy and love. And the word of the testimony of that relationship in their lives are walking now in heavenly places together where two have become one. And they overcame the dragon, the devil, that old serpent, by doing that. Otherwise, we're still partnering with that, Father. And so I pray that we'll see the gravity of this. Start doing the work. Christ already did all the work. Father, Christ already did all the work. He's willing to do the work again through the Holy Spirit. You, Father, are willing to partner with your people and do the work again that you did through Christ Jesus in them. That's the whole point. Are we doing the work? Have we died? Have we died to be resurrected? Because if we haven't died yet, there's no resurrection. If you won't suffer as Christ did and die, then you will not be resurrected inside your soul. Your soul will not become regenerate and it will not be walking with God in heavenly places. Have we died? Are we doing the work to die? Are we laying our lives down so that we can live and that it can be Christ Jesus who lives in us? These are the things that we need to consider as a body. Are we under the Father? Are we the children of God who are led by the Spirit of God who do the will of the Father? Is Christ in operation in us? Have we been renewed at all? I pray that we will straighten this out with you and that your soul will be healed in these ways because all you do is desire for them to return to you, Father.